This edict identifies Jesus of Nazareth as a heretic and a blasphemer. This season on The Chosen. There are those for whom this will set off a series of events. My followers won't understand. Lazarus, come out! I guess you're not holding back anymore. I can't. I'm out of time. See season four of The Chosen in theaters on February 1st, starting with episodes one, two, and three. Get your tickets now at thechosenriseup.com. Good morning, Prakapton. If it is morning where you are, otherwise, good morrow, I suppose. Today, we're going over Meditation 14 from Book 5, and let's cut through all the nonsense and get right to it. Here it is. Reason and the method of reasoning are abilities, sufficient to themselves and their own operations. Thus, they start from their appropriate principle and proceed to their proposed end, where four reasonable acts are called right acts, to indicate the rightness of their path. So when I first sat down to write this script, it was not my intention to do what I am about to do, because what I am about to do is divisive on its face. Now, to be clear, it's not divisive if we do what Marcus is suggesting here and use the method of reasoning. The appropriate thing to do if we are to determine what acts are reasonable or right. But no matter how strongly you hold a shibboleth, you should be resilient enough to endure two things at least. First, the questioning of that shibboleth, and second, the process of letting go of that shibboleth when you are convinced by someone else or experience that it is wrong. I have said before, probably recently, probably yesterday, that this is a serious podcast. You make jokes sometimes, perhaps too often, but you are here to practice Stoicism, and Stoicism is not a comfortable thing to practice, because if it were, none of us would need to practice it, as we would all be sages if we found adhering to Stoic principles simple and effortless. Stoicism is work. I've said that before, too, so I want you to be prepared to do some work today. Don't continue if you're not ready for that, because no matter where you fall on the spectrum of moral positions on this issue, This episode is going to suggest you are wrong in some ways, and that is going to make you mad. I am, today, an equal opportunity offender. But this is what Stoics do. They endure the long and arduous journey to discover the sacred knowledge of virtue, and they must needs be in a sort of wrangling discomfort constantly, like they are locked in a grapple with someone equally strong and equally weak as they are. Stoics have conversations like this, and they don't flinch. So, I'm telling you, don't flinch. I want to talk about eating meat and diets which exclude meat, and the moral discussion surrounding those choices. I'm going to start by saying that no ancient Stoic would ever ask, is eating meat wrong, or is eating meat right, for that matter? Such a concept would have never crossed their minds. Musonius Rufus did suggest that eating meat made you dull-witted and slow, but that means his position on eating meat was based on how it did or didn't benefit a human's rational faculties and not whether or not it was right or wrong from the humane treatment of animals perspective. Musonius wasn't talking about that. This is also the case with Zeno and, for a time, Seneca. These ancients abstained from meat and complicated foods not for humanitarian reasons, but for purity of spirit reasons, from a desire to keep their minds sharp and unclouded. If anyone tells you the ancients didn't eat meat because they cared about animals, they are, by all research I've ever done, incorrect. However, and this is where the nuance comes in for this discussion in contemporary times, which is where we all live, The ancient Stoics, based on everything they wrote, would likely find the sort of commercial farming operations we perform in present day to be absolutely abhorrent specifically because of how animals are treated within it. From a Stoic perspective, I believe this conversation should not be about whether eating meat is right or wrong on its face, rather whether eating meat is being done in a just and reasonable way. Stoics apply their logic to all choices, all manner of decisions, and in so doing are trying to reason out whether those choices are just and reasonable. So why would a discussion about eating meat, or anything for that matter, be any different? It wouldn't be. 
It's just that some of us don't want to hear a nuanced view on this particular issue because nuanced views always mean some of our position, no matter what it is, is wrong some of the time. That's what nuance does. It's basically the, well, technically, or the, yes, but what if these circumstances were the case? Nuanced conversation is always a smack in the face to anyone who thinks there is an absolute constant to any line of moral reasoning, and it hurts. So, is eating meat right or wrong? In my opinion, that is a malformed question, or at least it's not a useful question. From the Stoic perspective, animals were created as part of a food chain, not just for us, but for other animals as well, surely. So, they are food, the same way as we might be food to bears in some situations. Becoming food is within the nature of any animal, as is becoming dead. And you need to stick with me here because I'm not done saying what I'm saying, and if you jump ship now, you're going to miss the point. It is in the nature of all living things to die. So killing animals, or one another, is not right or wrong because the result, death, is within the nature of everything capable of being alive. Killing something, an animal or human, does not prevent it from living according to its nature. Death is part of its nature. And again, continue to stick with me because I have not arrived at my point yet. But Tanner, of course killing something is wrong. No, it's not. Not from the Stoic perspective anyway. Unjust killing, on the other hand, is absolutely vicious and absolutely wrong. You know this because if you kill someone in a struggle to protect your wife or husband, you understand that's different from walking up to a stranger and killing them because you don't like the color of their hair. You know that death can come in at least two varietals, just and unjust. And this is where we arrive at the point. Killing an animal to eat it, there can be no argument, is just from the ancient Stoic perspective. That's part of any living thing's nature, to die and, if it is the case that the nature of the animal which has killed that animal is to be a carnivore, then also to be eaten. And again, this includes humans. This is just. The ancient Stoics would never tell us that it was unjust to kill an animal, but they 100% would tell us it was unjust to mistreat an animal or kill it in an inhumane way or for an unreasonable reason. Don't believe me? Imagine Zeno, the founder of this philosophy we all love so much, kicking a pig in the face and saying, you stupid animal, you are nothing but food. Is a pig not a good enough example? How about a puppy? or a kitten. And if Zeno himself is not compelling enough, how about the sage? Does the sage mistreat animals for his or her pleasure or ego? Of course not. A sage is not a tyrant. Let's extrapolate from that thought and ask the following question. Would the sage believe keeping a cow, for example, pregnant forever by the use of pharmaceuticals and other mechanisms for the sole purpose of producing milk in unnatural quantities for an unnatural length of time, that being her whole life, was a just way to treat a cow while it was alive. And if the answer is no, which it almost certainly would be, would an ancient Stoic purchase meat from someone who is a known abuser of animals, for example? Would a Stoic want to avoid normalizing and or rewarding that behavior when it was in their ability to choose to do so? There's context, of course. There has to be. This is Stoicism. That's why this conversation sucks to have and is difficult to think through. You, as a human, are more important than a cow from the Stoic perspective. And if you need to eat cow meat to live, then you need to eat cow meat to live, and there's nothing unjust about that. And if the only cow meat you can get is from a farm that treats their animals absolutely terribly, then you must do that. But if you can choose to eat meat from ethical farms with better practices, i.e. the treatment of animals, then aren't you, as a Stoic, required to make that choice, if you have the power to do so? If you're saying no to that, you need to rethink what you're interested in figuring out as a Stoic. Are you chasing virtue, and do you value reason and logic? Or are you more interested in fun little sayings that help you feel more empowered when you're having a shitty day? Stoicism is work. It's always going to be work. And as Marcus says in this meditation, thus they start from their appropriate principles and proceed to their proposed end. 
everything you do should be rooted in your appropriate principle, in your reason. This rooted beginning, this departure point, is the place from which everything else springs. If you forget this, you forget prosike. And if you forget prosike, you forget to pay attention to the most fundamental part of Stoicism. Examining our impressions so that our thoughts, attitudes, and actions might move us closer to virtue instead of further from it. So if you're a vegetarian or a vegan, why are you? And if you aren't, why are you not? If you apply Stoic ethics and logic to your position, does your decision to be a vegetarian or vegan, or carnivore, or some other sort of special eating decision, does it hold up? If not, where does it fail? Where does it succeed? These are the sort of questions as a Stoic you need to be willing to ask yourself and to have other people ask of you. And you should be resilient to examining your positions, no matter what they are on. If you have time, I would like to invite you to jump into our Discord community and check out the episode follow-up channel to talk more about this episode and these questions about diet, for example, or whatever you want. And you can do that by going to stoicismpod.com forward slash discord. Thank you so much for being here today. I hope you got something out of this episode and that you're not too upset or incensed. Please subscribe to this podcast if you haven't already and find notes, transcripts, and other things on our website at stoicismpod.com. Thanks for listening, and until next time, take care. Thank you.